Hey superstars, hola. Trying a new camera setup, so let me know your feedback of how you think the angle works. <laughs> so um, what I am creating today, so a lot of you would have seen some posts coming out about a immune, bo immune booster protocol. Um, now, actually, I was just listening to the South Australian radio. I love tuning in to Fresh 92.7. It's one of my old favorite radio stations, and I, I, um, I do it via the web these days. But what they were talking about is um, some, I can't remember who it was now, some big wig was saying about some light machine helping with, um, helping with your immune, uh, helping to get rid of COVID-19. He's now being sued because he was claiming some stupid machine was going to help everyone with COVID-19. Anyway, so let's come back to the basics and understand that the, the, we've spoken about this before is that the one thing that affects our immune system and our ability to cope and get through things is stress. So stress is different for everyone. Stress causes different reactions in different people and can be balanced, monitored and understood via many variables, which is now measurable, which we love with what we do is the fact that we can help people understand what that is for you as an individual. What I'm doing today and what this protocol is all about is that um, what we do understand is that certain ingredients, Chinese herbal medicine was one of these things that an Ayurvedic medicine are these two different modalities that have gone back for eons since the beginning of time and has never gone away for a reason. And most of today's modern medicine was created on the basis of what was found within those different uh, protocols and then turned into medicines or drugs. And so, but the one thing that really stays strong, the one thing that really stays true is the fact that the things we eat and consume and the way we prepare them will have a direct response to our body and its immune system and its stress response and it's everything. It's homostating. So... In understanding that, we get to know that there are certain foods that are going to be good for you. Like kale is actually not that good for a lot of people. I know, and everyone's like, kale's a superfood. Actually, it's really quite bad for some people. Or a poor choice. But what we're, what I'm going to do today is actually demonstrate I'm a diplomat health type. For those who are also diplomat health types will understand that being a diplomat health type, there is a rather more strict protocol to go through to reset your immune system and boost your, your, your body's ability to de-stress itself. Um, and it all starts in the gut. Some bodies are more about thinking, some bodies are more about feeling, and other bodies are more about doing. So when we understand that, coming into our immune boosting protocol for certain body types will be very, very different. So today I'm going to start with the basics of what an endomorph, a diplomat or a guardian would need. And then I'm going to uh, drop some tidbits because ours is the most comprehensive. <laughs> so I'll drop some tidbits about the other guys as well at the same time. So... Today what I'm going to do, I'm on a time schedule here, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make some roasted components, some steamed, com or I'll show you where you could do some steamed components, a raw component, a dressing component, some smoothies and some soups. So I'm going to cover a lot, but I'm going to do it very fast because it actually doesn't have to be that difficult. Hey Sage! So when doing this, all I'm going to show with you guys is how I quickly do my food prepping. I know there are a lot of diplomats who are coming into this immune boosting protocol and they want it simple. I've already done a couple of sessions with a couple of diplomats that wanted just to have some specific, what do I do? When do I do it? How do I do it? So today is me showing you what, when and how, and we're going to do this in 35 to 40 minutes and we're going to prep the entire week. How does that sound? Yeah. Okay, great. So all we're doing here is I'm just chopping down my root vegetables. Now, we don't have much root vegetables. If you're an endomorph doing your immune booster protocol, we are doing a solid seven days of the protocol. And then we're doing three days optimizing. This protocol is much shorter than the protocols I've ever done in the past. So you're very lucky, guys. You're very lucky at being able to have such a short protocol. But it's like a taste test. It's like getting in there, understanding the groove, and then later on committing to the grander scale of things. So what I'm putting in here is some pumpkin, some sweet potato, not very much guys, these are only going to be consumed, our protocol as an endomorph, we only want to be having our carbohydrates and or sugars around lunchtime, so um, all we're going to do is roast this up for that option, but I'm also going to utilise a few bits of it, which um, if you're one of our clients, you'll, um, you'll get to understand very, very shortly, if you don't know much about what I'm talking about, you can always reach out and have a chat about what the immune booster protocol is or how to cook for your specific health 
your specific person, your specific being. Um, but what we're actually going to do is um, some of these roasted vegetables will actually go into smoothies. I know that sounds really weird, but it actually is. When you get out of the mainstream, there is no rules with cooking. You can do just about anything you like, and all of them are great for you. So why would you not? Why overcomplicate things when we can just keep fresh and simple foods? So all I'm doing here is just chopping down my carrot, my pumpkin, and my sweet potato into the bowl. Falling in love with your herbs and spices is paramount. So cumin is one of my top ingredients. So I'm gonna make sure I've got a bit of cumin on my roasted vegetables. No oil out. Um, the Diplomat protocol or the Endomorph protocol will have no oil, no sugars, and no major carbs. Um, like no flowers, no uh, fruit is only to have around lunchtime or breakfast. Um, so then during dinner, we wanna be having salads that have got a lot of flavor in them. So all I'm doing right here is I've added some cumin, some cinnamon, I love smoked paprika because it just adds a really, really rich flavor to it. What's everyone saying? To eat beautiful food on two days straight. Oh, Kieran, I remember being, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys got to be there for a couple of retreats that I've catered. So I'm roasting up those. I'm also going to throw in a splash of fennel. Has anyone actually seen fennel before? Do you know what you can do with fennel? Fennel by itself tastes like aniseed which I don't like, but it's quite nice. Quite nice in a salad if you slice it up really, really fine when it's raw. Um, kind of looks like a cool soup spoon. Um, but if you roast it or steam it, it will actually make the flavor a lot more delicate and a lot more palatable. Um, and it can be really, really great in soups, sauces, stocks, all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna roast up a tiny bit of this today because I just like to use it as an agent for some of my dressings. I'm going to add a splash of water into this just to give it the ability to, just the moisture, because we're not, again, remember guys, I've just said before, we are not, um, we are not roasting with oil over this, this detoxing protocol because um, that will slow the process of the body eliminating toxins for endomorphs, guys, this is just for endomorphs, I'm just saying, every other health type, every other body type will have a different protocol. Um, there's just certain health types that have this kind of protocol. One health type has broths for seven days, just vegetable broth. One health type has smoothies for three to four days. Another health type has no protein for a couple of days. And someone actually did a post the other day and she was saying that she wanted to do a, um, a, a water fast. And she goes, what are some keys to doing your water fast? Blah, 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 blah. And I know her, her body shape. I'm only using the tiniest sprinkle of salt here, guys. Only the tiniest. I'm almost, I'm flirting with the salt. I'm only putting the tiniest bit in there. I'm also going to take my, gla my, gla my garlic, take the bottom off and pop that on the tray because I'm going to use that as a salad dressing later. Great little hint there. A couple cloves. That there is going to go in the oven. Now, the, I, this is... There's not going to be very much that I'm going to cook and this cooked component will be used for multiple facets because during our detox, it's very important that most of our food, for, for me, is an endomorph and endomorphs, most of our food is to be consumed raw. Yep, raw. Um, unfortunately, this morning, I don't have all of my raw stuff, particularly get the gist because I'm going to go shopping later, but I'll show you guys the cooked component. The raw part's easy. It's just lettuce leaves and whatnot. Um, from here, I'm then going to do my second lot of, so the baking that I've just done there is all the hard roots, the roots that are going to take longer to cook, they're going to need a little bit more. Then I'm going to come in here and take my, that's a blunt knife, take my um, aubergine or eggplant and cook that one down. I'm going to roast this one. Now, this one can also be used as dressings. I mean, look at what we do with um, baba ganoush. Baba ganoush is done with cooked eggplant and you can actually take that same concept not add any of the fats into it and just add a vinegar um, like uh, apple cider vinegar or lemon juice and you can use that as a dressing on a salad why not there are no rules when it comes to cooking uh, but right now we're going through a protocol for helping someone actually detoxify their body and their mind and get really creative in when we do protocols like this, sadly, a lot of people do things like water fasting, which is just ridiculous. Um, and then they come out of it. And what happens when they come out of it? Quite often they'll just end up rebelling or 
they'll end up rebounding eventually. Um, and the body, sadly, what happens to the body when we do that yo-yo effect? It loses trust in us. Our body goes, hey you, actually I'm annoyed and I don't believe, I don't trust that you have my best interest here. So I'm going to make sure that the next time you eat something crappy or not, um, not, so, not so nice, then the body will actually turn around and say, you know what, I don't trust you. I'm going to store every ounce of every bit of fat of everything just in case you end up doing this ridiculous thing to me again. I'm going to hold on to everything. So then you get this really resilient body that's totally rebelling against everything you give it, right? How many people do you know that do this yo-yo dieting? And so the body ends up giving up faith on you and going, well, you know what? If you can't love me, believe me, and trust me, well, then I'm not going to participate and I'm going to hold on to everything. Oh, good catch. I caught that one. Wait. No, no, wait. Zucchini. Tried to run away. Um, I'm going to roast off a tiny bit of zucchini, only a couple of them. Again, we want more raw vegetables than we do want cooked vegetables. Into this bowl, it's already got some flavours in there from the last batch, which I just used some water. I'm going to add a little bit more spice. This is something I found at the um, Indian spice shops. If you can find an Indian spice shop, go in there. They're your best friend. They have so much, so, so much for free, for cheap. Can you post this? What's in the jars you're using for flavor? Yes, so in the jars I use for flavor was just cumin, cinnamon, um, cumin, cinnamon, smoked paprika, and a little bit of cayenne pepper. But right here I actually have a luxa paste, a uh, powder, powder. So the paste during a detox, a no-no. There's a lot of oil in there, a lot of sugar in there. I just got cayenne pepper up my nose, so I might sneeze. <sighs> um, and so if I do, I'll sneeze that way. Um, and so these are really, really great because it's all the spices without the sugar, without the fat. So it's really awesome to flavor our dishes. So I'm going to add a little bit of this because it's got a fair bit of spice in it. And I want that fire and... <coughs> oh, hello. I've got that fire in my belly. Don't sniff the jar. Um, I want the fire in my belly. I want the spices that are in this because they're going to help fire my metabolism. But not too much because I know this one is like cayenne pepper, eat a heart out. You could be adding in some oregano. Guys, if you've got a genetic profile, you will know. If you guys, those who have genetic profiles that are watching this, you will have your food list that will tell you exactly, exactly which herbs and spices are going to be most beneficial to you right now. So I've just put some oregano in there. I've put cumin in here. I've put thyme. I know that fennel, dried fennel, looks very much like dried coriander and dried... Um, Looks like coriander and cumin, but it's ever so slightly paler and granular. It's more fluffy, if that makes sense. More fluffy. So I'm going to add a little bit of fennel powder. Yes, I've got it in the, in the natural form, but I like to add a little bit more. A little bit of apple cider vinegar, because you always want to add an element of vinegar to these lighter vegetables. They love it. They suck it up very well, and they taste delicious. All right. So what we're doing here is we're cooking the vegetables in multitudes of different ways so that we get multitudes of different textures, multitudes of satisfaction in different ways. So on those days, so during, generally for an endomorph, your breakfast would be a smoothie or a salad done with 80% vegetables, 20% fruit for flavour, okay, for just flavour. And what we generally do is we would blend up most of the ingredients and then we would leave like half the orange or if cacao nibs are high on your list, you could sprinkle some cacao nibs over the top um, as some crunch so that you're not just gulping down this gigantuous, um, uh, gulping down this massive smoothie, you're actually having to stop and chew the pieces. Great tip there if you've got children that do that. So all I'm gonna do here is pop these on the tray. I probably should have done a bigger tray, but that's all good. Pop these on the tray and pop them in the oven. And I'm gonna get them to roast down just the mushrooms, zucchini, eggplant, with the paprika, um, all of those. I don't care that they're not, they're on top of each other. I just want to cook it a little bit because again, we want the raw the better for this, but I'm just creating extra flavors and textures that I'm going to be able to make dressings with, dips with, soups with, so that they're all vegetable based. So while they're in the oven, my next protocol step is to take my leek. Leek is incredible for detoxifying the body. And I'm just going to go to the top here, about an inch. So you'll see the top gap on leeks. You'll see the outer leaf will have about a, a sliver down the side. Give it about an inch and, a, inch and a half 
from that and slice it there. This is where you get dirt trapped in. This is where you get all the nasty, nasty stuff that you don't want in your body. So always cut that in half and then go rinse it off and rinse out all the dirt out of here. I will do that later because I just want to stay focused with you guys here. The rest of it is fine though. So I will chop that one. Now, leek is incredibly high on my list because it has so many functions for detoxification, fluid retention, uh, for mental clarity, for immune boosting, for antifungal, antihistaminic, the list will go on. So I've taken one leek, I'm taking three stalks of celery, I'm taking some fennel and I'm going to cook this fennel down. Again, I want another element. The fennel is wonderful for um, salad dressings, but also wonderful as a sauce as well. So I'm just going to pop that through. Let the bottom bit always chunks out. Chop that one through and this is all going to go into a frying pan. And this is going to cook off and caramelize away. So the reason why I'm doing them all in this flow is that while one is roasting, the other one can be frying while I'm chopping and preparing the rest of it. It's all about creating a flow effect. So in here, I'm going to turn on my... Pop this all here. Turn on my flame pan. And into that, we're going to put our... Stir fryable. So these are all in there because they're all a similar family of the onion, and they all have very similar properties of antifungal, antihistaminic, fluid retention. You name it, they are amazing. In that, again, I'm going to put a tiny bit of my luxa paste, a uh, powder, um, and a tiny bit of cumin, just for a little bit of extra flavour, guys, and some smoked paprika because that just makes it sexy. Because I'm trying to caramelise it right, and if I caramelise it well, it will actually come up with this beautiful beautiful crunchy flavor um, but then the smoked paprika almost gives it like this this like oven fire roasted sort of flavor smoked paprika is an unknown wonder it's incredible that's gonna cook away so what's my next step my next step so we've done the roasting vegetables if you wanted to right now would be the other opportunity to steam some green beans steam some cabbage whatever you want to do some, some green some broccoli you could steam some broccoli you could leave some broccoli raw um, on 180, yeah, 180. I do the oven at about 190 because um, I want it to be hard, hot and fast. So I want the outside to cook really, really well, but I don't want it to overcook it. I want it to get crunchy as quick as I can. And there's a fair bit of um, product on those trays. So the hotter the oven, the better it's going to get into there. If the oven's too low, you're just going to stew it in the oven, if that makes sense. Now what I'm going to do is um, come in and do my salad. So in my salad, I always, cabbage is a cancer-fighting product. Um, and for certain bodies though, if you've got thyroid issues, they may not come up very high. Um, so again, this is what I love about, what I'm talking about is a lot of different elements. But what I love with the scientific program that we use is that it's all done for us. The measurements are all done. The calculations are done. It's made very, very simple. All you do is take your measurements put them into the machine or the, the program, and the program tells you exactly what your body needs throughout the year in the different seasons, in the different weather, as to what it actually needs for optimum health. Make it a sense? Doesn't need to be difficult or hard. So I'm gonna take my chopped up cabbage into my salad, and your salad can have anything on your list. I'm gonna use that for smoothies. So salad. It's more like a coleslaw base at the moment. I'm going to take some broccoli. Chop up all your stalks and your broccoli. If you want, you can cook your broccoli or you can leave it raw. It's entirely up to you. Um, then I'm going to throw it now. Did anyone know that you can actually eat beetroot raw? Beetroot is actually delightful. Absolutely delightful raw. It actually, when I was doing bodybuilding and I was cutting out everything, my world, my life, Raw beetroot is actually crunchy and sweet just like an apple and it is absolutely blissful inside of a salad. Actually, I do see that a lot of the salad places are now catching onto it and serving up raw beetroot in some of their salads, which is wonderful. So we've got cabbages, we've got beetroot, and beetroot is wonderful. It's the colour of our heart. It's a blood purifying product. It's the colour of our blood. So of course, naturally, it's going to be epic for our body 
in times of wanting to keep our health. So all I'm doing is topping through all these veggies and I'm going to make a salad. So we've got beetroot. The next one I'm going to make, and it's all about making different textures. So it's a thin crunch from the cabbage. We've got um, a soft texture of the broccoli, a crunch of the, um, the beetroot. I'm now going to throw in some capsicum into my raw salad and slice that one down. You can be pretty and pedantic about it if you want to, or whatever. I'll leave that to you. Okay, so capsicum. I'm going to chop up some celery. Now, celery is incredible. Incredible. I said it before for fluid retention. The other thing that I know for myself and many of my clients, radishes. Who here has eaten radishes before? Do you guys actually know what they taste like as a raw radish? No. They are red on the outside and they are white on the inside and they're very crisp and they almost if you've ever had wasabi wasabi it kind of has that similar burn effect like immediate burn but it dissipates very quickly as well but incredibly good for you right now uh, for me right now uh, with massive massive pro uh, major properties of uh, boosting your immune system detoxifying the body aiding with fluid retention eating fungal eating histaminic you name it you can see why People just don't realize that fresh is best because it actually has all the elements that our body requires. We don't need to go to medications and um, synthetic compounds to keep our health abundant. It's really just coming back to basics, guys. And I think that's kind of the gift we're getting in this current climate is the factor of coming back to basics. We've got some um, cucumber here. I'm going to throw that in there. In my salad, I'm also going to pop some over here for our um, smoothie protocol. So already, let me bring this up and share with you how sexy this salad looks. So already we've got all these veggies, all these colours. In here I would then throw in, for me at the moment, spinach is super high, but kale is high. So if I wanted to, I could throw in my leaves. I'm going to keep them separate though because the acidity of these vegetables mixed in with the leaves will turn the leaves a lot quicker. So I will cook up the, uh, I'll chop up the... Um, the roughage, I guess, the, the, the mixture of different vegetables, and then I'll keep my leafiness separate and mix that in as per required, as per desired and required. The other thing is, is keeping it interesting, guys. So, okay, so we've got those crunches, we've got those other shapes, the sharpness of those other ones. Let's create another texture in there. Don't forget about your leek and your, your sauteed veggies. Just a splash of water in there. About uh, a quarter of a cup of water. Um, and then with these ones, what I want to do is create another consistency. So we've got all these sharp edges here. So let's do something a bit different, right? Get your veggie peeler. The kids can help with this one. Peel it down. Don't throw away these bits. They can actually go into your smoothies. I know zucchini and a smoothie, are you for real? I'm going to take everything you think and believe about food and blow it out the wazoo. Because it's all BS. It is all BS. It's all a configuration of someone's belief of what's right and wrong for food. But the truth is there is no rules when it comes to food. It's only what we're trained into. And there's a whole world of delightful, concept, delightful thoughts and processes, flavours and textures when it comes to food that people have just not been able to explore because the media or people were under uh, were, were not given the opportunity to express and explore themselves through food enough. So same with the carrot, I'm going to create some carrot ribbons. I mean, people are spending, what, $5 a bag at making their own carrot pasta, carrot noodles. Get in there with a the peeler. And you've got your own spaghetti. Look at that. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Make a tomato sauce or a pumpkin sauce on top of that. Meatballs if you are eating meat. That's easy. Cheap. Not even 50 cents. Not even 50 cents. So there we have a nice salad. The next tip that's going to be an absolute must is understanding what herbs and spices uh, that are raw that are really, really important for you. So for me, I know that the, the number one thing that I can be eating for my health right now, the absolute number one ingredient out of every ingredient that there is in the world 
It's this little one. Who knows what that is? That, my friends, is a herb that can be grown anywhere. And it is so good for me for antihistaminics, um, for digestion, eliminating toxins. This is called thyme, okay? Thyme takes time to harvest your thyme. See these little leaves? You've got to be able to come along and pull them off. Extract your leaves. It takes a bit of time to get your thyme. But that one on top of everything for me right now is absolutely like a pinnacle of all of my health right now is ensuring that I get thyme every single day in some way. You can put it in fresh, you can put it in, I could put it in this guy's over here and cook it into the, the saute here. That one's cooking away, doing its thing. So over here, I'm just gonna place my thyme. Now the other thing that people don't think about is if you take one, oh give me one second, let me grab it so you got a visual. You take uh, one smoothie cup, and you put one sprig, say let's go, even this one here. You take this much time, which will be very beneficial to you, and you put this much time in this cup, you're really not gonna notice it. Smoothies, which we're about to get onto next, are so misunderstood, so misjudged, so forgotten about, that I'm gonna blow your mind. So hold on, hang with me. So can we see, salad is now prepped, Roast veggies are in. If you had steamed veggies, the steamed veggies would be on. Our sautéed veggies is cranking away and cooking down delightfully. Uh, where's my spatula? Cool, they're looking good. So then we would have our container of greens, our container of salad. We have our roasted vegetables just about to be done. The other thing I'm going to put into my raw salad, does look a bit sad, doesn't he? My poor coriander. But that's okay, he still tastes good. He still has a good amount of nutrition in him. What I'm going to do is chop my cilantro or coriander into my salad as well. The salad is the spot where you want to add the most herbs and spices that you possibly can fresh. So yes, naturally some thyme, oregano, um, thyme, oregano, cilantro, um, lemon juice and we're going to make a dressing in a minute so hold on for that i'm going to show with you guys how to make an amazing lemon uh, salad dressing using some of these ingredients which i will do with this so what you can do your basis will always be your citrus choose your citrus these are some really good lemons just check them over the top bottom check that there's not too many seeds this one's a really good lemon and i've rinsed it which is wonderful in don't kick your fuss. Throw it in there. Throwing in some thyme. Throwing in some garlic. Throwing in some ginger. And this will be the basis of most of my dressings. Ginger, get yourself a zester. Go, throw that in. Now, the other element you're going to want to add into a salad dressing is going to be some of your apple cider vinegar or a vinegar that is of a high recommendation for yours truly. About, well, look, there is, there's no measurements when it comes to salad dressings. It really is whatever you throw in. So for me, I would throw a half a cup. A half a cup, one lemon, a ginger, um, a, a half an inch of ginger, a clove of garlic for those who like to have measurements. From here, you've got all these spices you can be using. So I'm going to throw in some paprika. I'm going to throw in some cumin because the more I can get these ingredients into my body every single moment of the day, the better off I'm going to be. I know that nutmeg is incredibly high for me at the moment, so I'm going to throw some nutmeg in there. Uh, I know that cloves are incredibly hot. I'm only going to add a tiny bit of clove. Give me. Now I can also add into this. This needs some more water. Just a little bit more water. Help lift everything off. If you want to, you can add a fair bit, like add a full cup and stew it down, like um, stewed apples almost. 
And for the purpose of right now, I'm just going to grab some just because I want to. Straight into this jar. And that's going to go in for my salad dressing. Now, the other thing that I would do for my salad dressing is actually add, you could add in some orange. If you want to do some fresh orange juice, you could add in, um, but what I will do generally is the roasted vegetables we had there would do um, roasted carrot in that. So if you threw some roasted carrot on top of that and blended that down, it would come up quite smoothy, smooth and creamy. That's my alarm saying food prep time. Um, will come up quite quite thick and smooth. So once you've roasted your vegetables, oh, the joys of wearing glasses. Whew. Once your vegetables are roasted, I would then go some of those in there. These need a little bit longer. They are gonna need a little bit longer, which is totes cool, totes cool. Um, I could also add into the salad dressings, salad dressings, the roasted garlic. Oh, if you haven't never had roasted garlic, you are missing out on life. There's a whole world out there. And once it's roasted, it will just squeeze straight out of those little um, outer layers. Careful, it's hot. And then what I would do is actually plonk some of these cooked veggies. Uh, they need just a little bit longer. A little bit longer. Some of those cooked veggies into your salad dressing and blend them down. Now, the other thing, I haven't used much salt here, but what you will notice is I have used a fair bit of um, celery. Cool little fact, celery, please compost. Celery is actually incredible at creating a salty flavour in a lot of dishes. So if you're doing a soup, a sauce, a stock, a stir fry, use celery as your way of adding salt. Hence why, over here, I'm cooking down this mixture of the the fennel, the uh, leek, and the celery, because it's not only going to add flavour, but it's also going to add um, a saltiness to all of my dishes. So cooking your celery into each of your dishes will add salt without you needing to add salt. It's one of those wonderful divine dishes that are vegetables that has so many properties to it that it just creates deliciousness. Um, so what I'm going to do for you guys, I'm going to blend this down very quickly. No oil, you'll notice. If you want to, you can add a little bit of water to get it into a softer consistency. But that's going to be the basis of my salad dressing. And then, like I said, I'm going to add in some roasted carrot and roasted pumpkin to this one. And that will be my salad dressing for a couple of days. Keep it all in the fridge. I might even pop that there and finish it off while we talk about watching the time. Because we're going live. If you have not yet, we are going live at 11 o'clock Queensland time. It's now 35 past. Uh, we're going live at 11 o'clock and we are doing a live uh, measure up party for those who are jumping on board with the immune booster protocol to boost our immune systems. They get 30 days. Our, our, our company is offering everyone a free 30 day window into their genetic profile. Free. Completely free. With a 10 day immune booster protocol specific to you. So that's why I'm doing this is because there's a whole bunch of people all around the world who are jumping on to do this. And this is me showing you guys that food prepping is not to be feared. It actually is quite wonderful, and um, it can be this simple. I'm going to let that one turn off. Now let's talk about smoothies. So we have the salad done. We have our vegetables cooked, but you remember I had all these leftover pieces. I had some cabbage left over. What I generally will then do is make myself a box that goes in my fridge. I have my box of salad, raw. I have my bags of spinach or whatever leafy green that I'm going to use, um, lettuce. Then I will have uh, my container of roasted vegetables, my saute mixture, and then I will have my box of smoothies. So first thing I'll do is get up in the morning and I will add in, I go, what are the top fruits for my genetics right now? And for me specifically, my top fruits are oranges, lemons, and plums. Okay, so I know that my 20% of fruit that I'm going to have inside of my smoothie, thanks Robin, oh no, Michael, for saying my dress is nice, thanks very much. Um, so I know that for me, my best fruit is going to be these bad boys. Then inside of a smoothie, there is no reason why I cannot go and add in raw carrot. So I challenge you, and all of the gentlemen that I've worked with in Yatla have had this massive connection over the concept of having um, 
vegetables in their smoothies and are not being full of milk, fruit, yogurt, fruit, yogurt, fruit, milk. So that's to sugar, fat, carb, sugar, fat, carb, sugar, fat, carb, sugar, fat, carb, and a gigantic shitstorm for anyone trying to actually get their body back balanced again. Diabetes, eat your heart out. I know that's extreme. It's still with the goodness of berries and whatnot. But what I'm saying is, y'all got it back to front. Society and consumerism caught you and caught you well. Pull it back in and actually understand that smoothies are a wonderful opportunity to hide, use, utilize a bunch of vegetables. So, in saying that, I'll just grab another cup. Cup. I take my leftover bits of zucchini. I have a little bit of, I have an inch of cucumber. I have my leftover piece of carrot that I was blending with. I have, this is actually my breakfast this morning. I'm probably gonna eat this in the next 10 minutes. I will grab a little bit of cabbage, red or green. For me at the moment, red and green are both about the same. Throw that in there. Ooh, I've got some green capsicum sitting here. Oh my God, yes, I can actually throw that in there and I'm not gonna die. I will then throw in some celery. So in my box for my smoothies, I've just got all the vegetables. Some celery, some spinach. If you blend spinach up, it will become very, very, very creamy. Spinach is one of those things that people actually don't know can be so wonderful in smoothies. The other thing you can totally put in a smoothie is some lettuce. Because you just don't know it's even there. Then what I would do, get that out of the way. Then what I would do is take my fraction of a lemon. A little bit. Now the reason why I'm leaving the rind in there is at the moment, my food profile tells me that lemon rind is incredibly good for me because the essential oils that are in that rind are amazing. So make sure they're rinsed, but you can throw that in there. I would then throw in my plum. Slice it, twist it, pull your seed out. Nice and easy. Uh, I would do half of an orange. The reason why I'm doing that is because half will go in and half will go on top so I can chew through it. Because, yes, a lot of us can go unconscious without eating and end up sculling an entire cupful without even realizing it and then feeling nauseous or sick or overdone later on. So I will take half of my orange. Chop it in there, and then I'm gonna chop this lot down to go on top of my smoothie at the end. Make it all pretty if I want to. These rinds, you don't have to throw this away. Did you know you can actually steep these in tea or cold water and have flavored tea and cold water? Why not? It's free. Leftovers. Then I would blend this down. No, um, no milk. I would just add, um, I would just add water to this. And here's the weird bit that a lot of you might actually get a little bit concerned about but if I then take just use the glasses again if I then take ooh, some of my cooked vegetables some pumpkin carrot a little bit of sweet potato oh my god who thought to put the roasted vegetables inside of the thing yes it's gonna make it not cold did you know this is a big fact for everyone let me come back to that let me get this hot tray down did you know that your body is very much like the earth. And this is one for everyone's digestion. If you're suffering from digestive issues anywhere, any brain fog, this could be the total thing. Are you drinking water too close to your meals? It should be no closer than 20 minutes before your meal and 30 minutes after your meal so that your body uses its digestive juices to digest the food. Point number one. Point number two is that we sadly consume everything cold and your body is the earth so if you can imagine the earth right now we're, we're facing global climate change and all the rest of it so if we were to go and stick ice cubes in the middle of the earth and change the center of the earth's core temperature what do you think is going to happen outside what do you think is going to happen in inside the entire earth you're going to end up with shit going wrong poor digestion poor brain cognitive function poor energy sources lethargy bloating Distension, all these things are a cause of a lot of people having too much cold food. So you should be having things at room temperature. Salads, smoothies. I've not put anything, I've not put anything frozen in here. You can. 
There is no reason why you cannot. I've actually got frozen kale and frozen spinach that often I will throw in there, but I'm not consuming the drink for another hour or two. So that's how I get through that. But this here has got all the vegetables and the fruits. If you need to start out with a greater quantity of fruit, do that and build your way up. And just start off with, just start off with baby steps, guys. If you need to sit there and go, you know what, today I'm going to start this weird vegetable thing that Shana's talked about. Bloody weirdo. So I'm going to do this, this thing, all right. Look, Shana, I did the vegetable thing. I'm winning at life. I put that much vegetables into my smoothie. If that's all you can master to build your way up, do that. And then in the next one, add double that. And then in the next one, add double that. Until you start to transmute yourself from having a sugar overload in your smoothies to actually having a really nutritious opportunity for your body to consume a lot of extra vegetables. Can you imagine starting your day with all these vegetables? Every day, your body's going to be like, yeah, man. Living well. Um, but if you make this and you can't drink all of it, the other thing is, is you can totally, and this is what I say to a lot of the diplomats that I've been dealing with the last couple of days, helping them with their protocol to get ready with this, is that you can um, just have two thirds of it and then put away a little cup full to have with your lunch. And it actually really helps to satisfy you after your salad at lunch. There we go, guys. Any questions, any thoughts? Again, like I said, this is me. I've been speaking to the factor of those who are detoxing and doing a, a, an immune booster protocol, which is allowing the body to reset everything. Eliminate the, 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 the things that our body doesn't like. Eliminate the cooking processes. Eliminate the oils or the fats or the sugars that our body is actually not digesting properly. Giving the body an opportunity to, through Chinese herbal medicine, which we've already gone through, we've had the, the thyme, we've had the um, cilantro, we've had the, the benefits of fennel, the benefits of leek, the benefits of celery. We've talked about the different modalities of cooking in this segment. So if there's any questions that have come up for you, please let them come through to me and I'm happy to answer them. But basically today we are we're getting everyone ready to launch tomorrow with all of their individual specificity. So some people, some phenotypes, for this is a diplomat. For the body type we call connectors, it's a couple of days of smoothies. For the body type of activators, it's a couple of days of lower fat and lower protein. For crusaders, again, lower protein, lower fat. And the crusaders are having all cooked food. Sensors are having all cooked food, like stews and casseroles and things like that, and lots and lots of carbs. Those guys, whew, lucky health type, they get carbs. Carbs are really good for them. So it's understanding that you as an individual can actually obtain all of this information very quickly and effectively so that you are um, able to know. No more guessing, guys. It's just simply you just go into an app. The app tells you what you need based on your body's phenotype, your body's genetics, and tells you exactly what you need to give you the best out of life. So enjoy, cook, eat your heart out of all the good things, and know that being healthy is actually still very tasty, very diverse, but we've just used all vegetables today and created, created a magnitude of different options. The other thing is, is how many of you have come home and you just, you're over the salad, you're over everything in the fridge, you just want something, you feel emotional, or maybe you just feel needy or whatever it is, and you just want a soup. You just want a soup. Again, you can take some of the raw, some of the sauteed, and some of the roasted, blend it down and warm it up, and you've got a really nice soup, guys. Maybe you might want to throw some carrot battens or some sweet potato battens into the air fryer or the, or the oven and create some little chippies to stick on the side. Being healthy doesn't have to be boring at all. Use your fluff, get fall in love, create the most sexiest herb collection you've ever desired, ever thought of, and start trying something new. It's like a dating app. It's like go out and date a new herb and spice every week. See what you can create with it. See what the flavor does when it's mixed with other ingredients. See what it's like when it's sprinkled on or in other things. Date, oh, here we go. Isolation, date your herb rack. Fall in love with your herbs and spices. Fall in love with vegetables in different ways. I'm not, and please understand right now, I am not advocating veganism here. Please understand that. All I'm saying is that for my phenotype, a seven to 10 day plant-based program under strict protocol of understanding how it needs to be cooked, when it needs to be eaten, what it needs to be served up as, is the only time you'll get me close to calling things vegan. And it's only for 7 to 10 days. Beyond that, oh, 12 days actually, 7 to 12 days. Beyond that, you can actually start to cause problems for people. Science is amazing. If you have any questions, hit me up, let me know. Have you have any requests, hit me up, let me know. But for the next week, I will not be doing any of my sexy voluptuous cooking. We're actually going to be doing detox protocol, reset protocol, 
health protocol, understanding what your body needs, and different variations of smoothies and different variations of salads. It's not gonna be very exciting this week, but it's also gonna be mind-blowing to help have you guys see how little you can actually live on uh, to reset your body and nourish it. But before I let you go, I'm just gonna pull out of the oven. Because I know that they're ready without burning myself. Here we have our mushrooms and our eggplant. Yummy, yummy. I could totally put these, oh shit, this our salad dressing that we had before. I could totally put some of the eggplant in there. Some of the mushroom if I wanted to. It doesn't matter. Any of these veggies can go into that salad dressing and blend it down. Eggplant actually blends down quite creamy. Think of bubble ganache. It is a lot of the time you need to make it creamy, but the eggplant still does a creamy consistency. Put those in there. Put some carrot, roasted carrot in there. I'll show you guys the roasted carrot now. It's just about done. Lovely. So our roasted carrot and our roasted pumpkin, that's gonna go in there. I'm gonna blend those down and make my salad dressing that will go across my salad. So I've just then got a salad that's being dressed with more pureed veg. And it actually has a lot of flavor, guys. Trust in the process. It has so much flavor. It's so much goodness for you. I hope I've given you, even if you're not doing the detox protocol and you've just been observing what I'm talking about tonight, today, and it is inspiring you to potentially eat some better foods and try some extra flavors, try some extra combinations, do that. Do that. Just find some cute ways of adding in these different ingredients and playing with the different textures and the different remedies of cooking them and see what you can come up with. Share it with me. What are you creating? What are you trying this week that maybe you might not have? What spices and herbs are you dating this week? <laughs> Love you guys.